Hello again. So we will now cover the most uh, common, also most trivial case that you can get when running a PCR unsuccessfully, and that is you get no PCR product at all. So what you get in this case is just a little bit of a schmear, like here and here and here, if you run your PCR products on, a, on an agarose gel. So that's representing your uh, primers that have not been used for amplification and otherwise you see no product at all. Too bad. So what could have happened? Why could it not have worked? Well, first possibility. First possibility is some component might have been missing. That can happen. You may simply have forgotten it or it may have gone bad. So what do you need in a PCR? Well, I guess you know all that. So anyway, what you could have forgotten or what could have gone bad is template. However, what you may have also forgotten is the polymerase. So typically what you use is a TAC polymerase for PCR. So that's something that you need to add, of course. What you also need to add is the primers. And what you need to add is the DNTPs. So DNTPs, that stands for desoxynucleotide triphosphates. So it's actually a mixture. It's a mixture of DATP, DTTP, DGTP, and DCTP. So all that must be in your reaction, otherwise it obviously won't work. And so finally, what you add is a buffer. Typically, the buffer is being supplied by the manufacturer of the uh, polymerase. And uh, what you need to pay attention to, though, is that sometimes those buffers come with a separate lot of magnesia. Huh? That's something that you need to take into consideration, because in such cases you need to add the magnesia separately and if you don't do that the PCR won't work because the polymerase needs the magnesia in the reaction. Okay, so far for those uh, trivial cases where you have simply forgotten to add some components, such a case go back to it again and it will work. Another issue that frequently comes up is that something has been wrong with the temperature cycles. Obviously what you need to do in order to perform a PCR is to change the temperature in a regular fashion. Typically you do that with a heating block that we call PCR machine. And if the PCR machine has been broken or if the PCR machine simply has been dirty, so some dirt is between your tube and the, um, and the heating block, then the PCR won't work. So Apart from those trivial cases, let me just quickly remind you of how the temperature so over time, so this is small t for time, and this is large t for temperature. So what you typically do is you first heat up to your sample to something like 95 degrees. So the temperature is in Celsius degrees here. And uh, that you do to separate the strands then you lower the temperature to something like typically 55 degrees and that's where your primer would be annealing with the template and then you raise it to something like 72 degrees and that's where the polymerase actually would work at its best so that's how you uh, get the amplification and then you keep going you heat it up again to 95 degrees and so on and you typically do that anywhere between 20 and 40 times, that's the number of cycles that you need to include. So what can go wrong about your choice of temperatures? Well, um, one common issue is this, is this annealing temperature. So the annealing temperature is actually the most sensitive parameter to vary in a PCR program. If you make it too high, chances are that your primers won't bind to your template DNA, so you won't get any product. 
but you can also choose an annealing temperature that is too low and in such a case you will get multiple non-specific PCR products as we will hear about in the next lecture. So the annealing temperature being too high can be a frequent reason for not getting any PCR product at all. Apart from the annealing temperature, chances also are that you may not use a sufficient number of PCR cycles. So, especially if you have very low amounts of your template, try to increase that number of PCR cycles. However, I have rarely seen a PCR that would still give you a meaningful product um, because you have run it more than 50 cycles. So, 40, 45 uh, cycles is about the maximum. After that, it doesn't make sense to further increase the number of PCR cycles. So much for the temperature. What else can go wrong? Well, your template can be suboptimal, to put it mildly. If you forgot to add the template, of course it won't work, but maybe you add it, but it's something that we call a bad template. A bad template can, for instance, be a poor preparation that still contains lots of protein. Perhaps it's taken from blood, so hemoglobin can be an issue if that is still in your sample in some traces. That can block a PCR uh, or otherwise just a DNA preparation that uh, contains uh, additional material that would block your uh, PCR. In such a case, uh, you need to try and uh, purify your DNA to a, uh, to a greater extent. Um, that includes uh, phenol extraction, but there are also many sources, many commercial suppliers that you that would provide you or that would be quite happy to uh, sell you uh, some uh, columns. Typically, they are um, based on a silica matrix, and uh, that serves to uh, absorb the DNA allowing you to wash away everything else. Uh, so you consider prepara a better preparation of DNA in case you have to admit that it's a bad DNA preparation. Okay, sometimes your DNA preparation isn't really bad, but the amount of DNA that you have in your template is insufficient. Insufficient amount of template. In such a case, first of all, you try to increase the number of PCR cycles, but if that doesn't help, you can do something else. You can do something that we call nested PCR. Nested PCR. Why nested? Well, nested means that you first of all, if that's your template, that's the other strand, you first of all design primers like this, and like this, so they would amplify this direction, that direction. However, once you got your PCR product in that way, amplified, you take some of that template and you run a new PCR. That new PCR would then be using primers that bind here and bind here, so they, as compared to the first, as compared to the first pair of primers, they bind to an inner portion of your PCR product and that will add efficiency and specificity of your PCR product. So you just go through another round of amplification using your nested primers that have been binding here and here. And that frequently helps to make your PCR work if you were uh, just short of starting material, if you had to amplify your DNA from a low amount of template, it can go down to a single cell. Single cell PCR can work, but frequently would require a nested PCR. And, um, well, that's not the only possibilities. Believe it or not, you might have been working with too much template DNA. Too much may or may not believe that, but that really happens that if you add more than say 20 or 50 or even 100 nanograms of total template DNA to a typical PCR that would be anywhere from 20 to 50 microliters, in such a case you got so much competitive DNA with your 
template binding of the primers and also serving as a substrate for the TAC polymerase, that in the end of the day, you won't get any amplification. So you can not only have too little template DNA, you can actually have too much uh, DNA in your PCR. In such a case, try a lower amount of template DNA and frequently it will work. And finally, it can happen that your template is simply a difficult template. What's a difficult template? Well, maybe it's clean DNA, sufficient amounts, but not too much. However, what happens is that perhaps in your template DNA, you might, that's quite typical, you might have a GC region. So it contains of Gs and Cs. And those portions of the DNA, they are harder to separate because they happen to have a triple bond, three hydrogen bonds with their counterpart. That makes them more stable. And they're also more prone to form secondary structures. Once you separate the strands, they are now single-stranded, but they can, easily, uh, they can easily form hairpin structures. That's something like that. DNA folding back on itself and such hairpin structures uh, will also block the polymerase reaction that is trying to use such a structure as a template. So that's also something that you don't really want to happen. So what can you do? Well, the easiest way is just avoid such structures. Just go elsewhere with your primers and, for instance, amplify this portion that would not contain the um, uh, the GC rich region in your DNA. That's always the easiest. However, if you can't do that for some reason, maybe you just need that GC rich uh, PCR product because you want to sequence it or because you want to clone it, in such cases you have no choice. Well, in such cases it can help to try different polymerases. So instead of using the TAC, you could use a specialized um, polymerase that the companies will be very happy to sell to you. It will be a bit expensive to buy all of them. But what you can do and what people in my lab frequently are doing is then just run through the entire building, ask in different departments whether they could uh, borrow a little bit of, uh, of their favorite uh, polymerases. And in that way, they can quickly try a bunch of them. And some of these uh, enzymes turn out to be quite helpful to get the PCR to work even through GC-rich regions that are difficult to amplify. All right, so much for the template. And then the last possibility that I would like to point out is that your primers, that your primers are just not suitable for the amplification.